Welcome to this week's edition of Ask GMBN. You guys have left us comments, asked us questions, and we're gonna do our very best to answer them. And the best part about this episode is I've got a little treat for you halfway through it, but you're gonna to have to wait and find out. On to the first question then. It's from Peter Schroed, and he's saying 120 millimeter forks on a 100 millimeter frame. How bad will that end up? Patrick, you're probably not actually gonna have a problem there. It's only a very slight change in angle on your bike and the fork will actually work better and it could perform better and it could change the capabilities of what your bike can actually do. But just be sure to check the manufacturer's warranty guidelines about changing this. The next one comes from James Ludic and he's saying, for $800, would you upgrade a hardtail or get a full suspension bike, but it's a stock full suspension? That's a tough one. I'd probably say go for a hardtail. You're at least gonna get the basics of mountain biking there. You could also think about looking at second hand, for example. If you look at second hand, then your $800 is gonna stretch really far. Stephen McNally is saying, what is better, spring suspension or canister suspension? By canister suspension, I can only assume they actually mean air suspension. And it really depends on what you're riding. If you look at a lot of the top downhill riders, they're using a coil shock over an air shock. You do see some people using an air shock, don't get me wrong there. However, for cross country and enduro riding, I'd say go with the canister or air suspension, definitely. Jack Newman is asking, guys, do you need to change both tires at the same time when one of them, usually the rear, wears out faster? Great question, Jack. And this is something that we've not actually spoken about before. But what about putting that front tire onto the rear tire, getting rid of that rear tire, and then putting a brand new front tire on? You're gonna get all the grip, all the turning that you're doing on that front tire, and it's gonna be fresh and ready for the trails. Akram Noval is asking how to deal with off-camber, slippery switchbacks. Now they can be a right nightmare, especially when it's wet, it's been raining and there's roots across them. But we've got a great tutorial on how to endo around switchbacks and perhaps that could actually help you. So check that one out. It's exactly the same whether you've got flat pedals, clip pedals, a hard tilt or full suspension. It's all about technique. The first thing though is find yourself a flat bit of terrain, car park, or we've got this road here and just practice the basics until you get them nailed. Ethan Tatum is asking, can you climb with a downo bike and can you make a video? That's a good one, Ethan, but I don't really fancy climbing too much with a downo bike. They're heavy, they're not designed to go uphill, and you're definitely not gonna get the seat at the right height for you to climb well with. So I'd probably stick to riding my enduro bike, and maybe you should think about riding an enduro bike too. They're also great fun, and you can shred the downhill too. What type of trails should a beginner ride? Josh MHD Productions. Now that's a good one. Now, you probably want to start with blue trails. We talk a lot, a lot about this on the show. You're not going to go into a black run straight away. You wouldn't if you were a skier, for example. You wouldn't just go down a black piece. It would be really steep. You'd get out of control and you'd really be struggling. So maybe start with the blues, build onto the reds, the orange, even the greens, and just build up and gradually, as you become more confident on the bike, you're gonna find that you're gonna to, to ride those more difficult and challenging trails. Velo1010 is asking, I noticed while watching some pro mountain bike races, when they pass a certain point on the course, someone is blowing a whistle. Why? Now, this is all down to safety, is to let you know as a spectator that a rider is coming down the track, you need to be aware of them there, you need to get off the track so you're not gonna get hit by one of them, or even get some serious injury if you do get hit. Bono Tamio is asking, will Vans or other skate shoes work good on platform pedals? Yeah, they will. You're not gonna have superior grip, but they will work. And especially if you're a beginner, they're a great way just to get into the sport before you have to purchase some really expensive mountain bike specific flat pedal shoes. Ryan Vigarura is saying, what do you think the best multi-tool you can find on a multi-tool is? Wow. Well, it really depends on the circumstances. A five mil is great, it really does everything. Likewise, a T25. So it'd be a hard pick between one of those two. But we've just done a video all about how to choose multi-tools. So why don't you check it out? Every ride that you go on, you should be carrying a multi-tool. It could be the thing that just gets you home. So here is our guide on how to use a multi-tool. And there is an all important bottle opener for popping the top off a beer. Now, I promised you guys a treat at the start of the show and we have got a treat for you. We've got Brendan Fairclough, pro downhill rider, and he's gonna join me for Correct Me If I'm Wrong and also Hello. the quick fire round. Ready for your first question? Absolutely, fire away. Caden K is asking, for practicing tricks, are foam pits or lake jumps better? 
I'm definitely not a trick guru, but I'd have to say foam pits are 100% better. Have you ever jumped off a high cliff onto your head? No, and I don't want to either. No, that's going to hurt into water, I think. Yeah. Luke Lopez is asking, can you guys make a video compilation of the worst crashes you've had? Have you got any? Uh, I've certainly had my fair share of crashes. Uh, my worst one's probably not on video, but uh, I uh, snapped my ACL a few times. That's not ideal, but uh, what about you? Yeah, I've not got any on video, but I've had a fair few crashes as well, definitely. And this one, right, Thatcher Sando is saying, how often would you suggest buying a new bike if I were to ride it fairly often? Um, I guess it depends how much money you've got for a start. Obviously, everyone likes new bikes and new shiny things, but I guess it depends on, uh, on how much you ride it, the wear and tear on it, and uh, that's about it, really. Yeah, I'd probably agree. You've got to be lucky if you're thinking about buying a new bike on a regular Absolutely. basis. Oh, Alexander Milkenvik, can you crank your aluminium frame on a full suspension trail bike for doing whips? Uh, if you do a whip nicely and you get good landing, no. Yeah. But if you uh, go too long and land flat, possibly yeah. Uh, if you don't bring it back in either. And gonna, if you don't bring it back that's in. That's going to break it, definitely. Yeah. Julian Royce is asking, is it okay to ride off downhill style drops on a 165mm enduro bike? I'd say absolutely yes. Uh, these enduro bikes are more than capable of all downhill tracks these days. And uh, when I look at the world enduro, they're amazing. 160 is enough. Definitely. Joshua Jones is saying, what's the best thing to eat whilst riding? Favorite tail snack? Uh, apple strudel. Yeah, the one that we had today was, it was tasty. Or banana and apple, you can't beat them. So correct me if I'm wrong, you guys have sent in some videos wanting to know if you can do something a little bit better and the first one comes from DP Downhill and he's asking is this jump big enough to do a tail whip or even a one-hander? Let's take a look shall we? Whoa, backyard jump. Uh, I guess tail whip means a normal whip, not an actual tail whip. I'd say probably not. I'd say we can get a cheeky one-hander in there yeah, though. Cheeky one, just That's a cheeky. cheeky. It's a quick one. Wires, yeah. And as the price, a bum, bum slapper. Yeah. The next is from Casper Anderson, who's saying a bit of washed away gravel and sand created a groove to ride in. It's a normal drop off, but how is my technique? Let's take a look, shall we? Well, Casper, um, I think the drop off technique, as you come to the edge of the drop, that you can pull up a little bit harder on the front wheel just to make sure that you're not landing nose, nose heavy on the landing. That's never really good, whatever you do when you're first trying something. Always try to land a bit further towards the back of the bike. But also, uh, as you're riding down that little gully, I think we could probably move our weight back a little bit more and look further ahead on the trail. And that would probably prevent him as well. That little knob on the side of the track, that almost hits and then goes over the bars. Yeah, that he's, he's quite far bad. forward and then sand, you want to be quite far back and keep your arms strong and, and lean back off the bike. Hang on, I've got poo in my eye. <laughs> Sam Lane is now asking, I find it really hard to whip. Is there any advice that you could give me? Another nice one. Well, Sam, firstly, you get both those jumps very well, which is good. But to learn whips, that's not the best jump to learn a whip. It's quite a downhill jump. I'd say the best jump to learn a whip and the safest way to learn a whip is on a step up jump, i.e. a jump where the landing is higher than the takeoff. It's way less, way less height to fall from. And also it's easier to turn off the lip. And if you land sideways, you're going to be landing slower less risk for your bike, less risk for you. And I think that's the best way to learn because on a jump down a hill, there's quite a lot of uh, risk and uh, danger there. So I'd, I'd find a step up jump and uh, try it on that. Well, another edition of Ask GMBN. You guys, if you need any questions answered, you can leave it in the comments down below or you can even send it to ask at GMBN as well. Don't forget to keep sending those clips for correct me if I'm wrong. If you want to watch some more videos from GMBN whilst you're here, why don't you click just about here and you'll get to find out about riding drop-offs. And here, if you want to learn how to whip with Mark Beaumont and Neil Donahue. But I'll be updating that one very soon, so uh, keep your eye out. And don't forget to subscribe. Just click somewhere around here, you'll get to the logo, click on it, subscribe, and you get a great video every day of the week.